have been hearing about a tentative agreement when it comes to our railroad workers, but a lot of folks at home don't understand just how important this is when it comes to our retail association. So what we want to do is break it all down, describe each and every single detail and how this has been impacting our families right here with you on live now from Fox. We're bringing in our VP of supply chain, Jess Dan Kurt. She is with the Retail Industry Leaders Association. And I know just that uh, we've been speaking before. This is definitely something that a lot of people were concerned about, but it's good news that there are some agreements already in the works, especially when it comes to uh, delaying that uh, strike and making sure that we still have those railroads operating when it comes to our retail suppliers. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for having me here, Christy. Uh, you know, I can't overstate the importance of getting these agreements uh, on in place ahead of that deadline. Uh, we were really looking at a, a potential for a debilitating strike uh, coming out of the negotiations that have been going on, you know, for years, they hadn't been able to reach an agreement. So uh, the retailers are definitely pleased to see this. Anybody who moves any kind of freight uh, by rail or in any way is very pleased to see this. It's critical for the economy. Um, so it really can't overstate how essential it was to come to this agreement in time. And you think about too, you know, that we're talking about railroad workers, but this does have a ripple effect because if they would have went on strike, you would have had to depend more on the trucking industry, which we already know has been hurting uh, to get things moving across our country. And each one does have uh, an effect on the other. Absolutely, that's uh, totally right. You know, and we've seen over the past uh, almost three years now of disruption caused by COVID, how the supply chain is really a, a system of systems and there can't be a breakdown anywhere along there without affecting the entire rest of the system. So looking at, you know, freight rail moves about 40% of freight on any given day in the country. That's an enormous uh, proportion of the freight that's moving. So any breakdown in that, if you were to take that out of the equation all of a sudden with a strike, that freight would either idle entirely and not move at all, or there'd be a you know a mad rush to try and put that on trucks, and that's just not possible. It's not feasible. We're already in a situation where there's you know close to a uh, driver shortage of eighty thousand drivers. As it is, there's already shortages of truck capacity, so it just wouldn't have been possible to make up that deficit with any other modes of transportation. So you would have seen things just not moving, and you know depending on the length of a strike that we could have seen, uh, just incredibly disastrous effects for the supply chain and for the economy. I think this really does highlight an issue that we are facing is just how fragile our supply chain really is. And as you mentioned, you know, especially for retailers, they've had headache after headache when it comes to these last two and a half, three years. So what could be done so that in the future, if there is one portion of our supply chain that might be going through negotiations or, you know, possibly on the brink of a strike, uh, that we wouldn't see such a big disruption? Is there anything that could be done or is it just trying to keep up with those contracts to keep everyone happy? And everyone working and everything flowing well everything always works better when you know the supply chain is working it's never good when you know things aren't moving the supply chains always want to be in motion um, and retailers certainly build in resiliency and flexibility kind of contingency plans uh, to their supply chains in cases like this where it's you know kind of a, a dramatic event that's outside of the control of the retailers themselves it's a rush to put those contingency plans in place to make sure that goods are still moving and getting to consumers, uh, but that's true. You know, it is a being a system of systems or all these opportunities uh, for breakdowns along the way. So where retailers try and build that resiliency into the system. One of the key things I think going forward is um, really getting better understanding of the visibility and around the supply chain, data sharing, and uh, the ability to you know, plan for any sort of eventuality. And a lot of that goes to you know, the data sharing piece so that you have much more of a pulse um, and uh, transparency to where the potential, um, potential issues might have effects and then how to make decisions to avoid or mitigate the disruption from that. And as you guys are, are continuing to try to get a little bit back to some of that normalcy, catch back up, I'm sure there's a lot of retailers who are still trying to play catch up when it comes to uh, getting their supplies in and meeting the demands of the American families as well. Yeah, and you know, in this case, because of all the disruption that we've seen over the past couple of years, um, large retailers have really got a playbook in place for dealing with a lot of this disruption. And in many cases, had been moving forward their shipments and have you know provided buffers of inventory so that they're less susceptible to some of these shocks that that may come up you know disruptions like a strike or like a disruption somewhere along that supply chain 
So a bit of a buffer in terms of inventory and also just making sure that you're getting things in plenty of time and a little bit less of that just in time supply chain that that many, not just retailers, but uh, many supply chain manufacturers included had built up over the past you know, 10, 15 years, building in a bit more of that flexibility and a buffer to uh, prevent disruption from these shocks in the system. Um, but really a case where we've seen just over the course of these these past few years, so many disruptions, just a need to kind of put a lot more of those contingency plans in place and find those workarounds uh, where they might be needed. And as these retailers are, you know, being flexible and already implementing some of these ways that they could work around uh, possible issues that are happening now or even in the future, uh, what does that mean for uh, the American families who are at home? They're probably uh, thankful that you guys do have all those plans in place that we're not seeing very much disruption in our daily lives, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the retailer's end goal is to, su to serve that customer. Um, and the plans that have been put into place in supply chain and all of the operations designed with that you know, endpoint in mind. And particularly you know, now where we're seeing um, inflation uh, taking hold, the potential effects of a strike would have, you know, on top of that, been uh, particularly debilitating on uh, the additional cost of trying to find these you know, workarounds and mitigation plans. Um, so all of this work on the part of the retailers and other shippers to try and insulate that end consumer from all of these shocks and disruptions along the way um, has really been critical to try and um, uh, reduce any sort of impact and uh, reduce any sort of uh, you know, cost increases for the end consumer. And while a lot of people are celebrating this tentative agreement, of course, there's a lot of questions still looming over other unions uh, as well that are affecting our supply chain. So uh, just what are some of the other aspects of the supply chain that you guys are really keeping a close eye on other than our union members still having to vote on this tentative agreement? Yeah, that's right. I think that's a great point, Christy. I think, well, we're very excited to see this agreement and it was absolutely critically necessary for it to happen before we got to the point of an actual strike. The unions, the membership of the union still need to vote to ratify these agreements that their leadership uh, made this week. Uh, so it remains to be seen, you know, we're not quite out of the woods yet with that. Uh, those votes will happen over the next couple of weeks and we'll see how those go, hopefully without incident. Uh, and I think the other thing to remember is that we still have the ongoing negotiations with the employers and longshore labor on the West Coast uh, ports. Uh, in the U.S. and you know that's 20 all 29 ports in the west coast of the United States are covered by that agreement. Uh, the contract expired on July 1st. They've been working without a contract since July 1st and that eliminates a lot of the protections in the case of localized incidences. While we haven't seen a coastwide strike, um, there have been a couple of little flare-ups uh, in, in localized um, issues there and without a contract there's no sort of protections against that. Um, so there's uh, there again the potential for um, not something we've seen as as dramatic. You know we're not kind of heading to the strike like we've seen uh, this week with rail, uh, but those negotiations continue. So that's something else that we're watching and has a potential for a, a pretty big effect on the supply chain, uh, and hoping that they can come to a quick and uh, good resolution on that negotiation as well. Yeah, I know a lot of people, again, like you just said, you know, happy that this tentative agreement was reached. But of course, uh, there's still a lot of question marks in the future. So hopefully they can uh, depend on those leaders and to really talk through each and every single union to come to an agreement altogether. We do appreciate you uh, helping give more insight onto what's been going on, especially for those who might not have been uh, familiar with uh, these possible strike that was looming and, and really causing a lot of uh, ripple effects already. So again, just anchor it. Thank you so much for being here with us. And we appreciate all the breakdown you gave to us today. Thanks so much, Christy.